Hi, welcome. Welcome to yet another bi-monthly webinar episode of Get More from Malapuram. And in this episode, we are actually celebrating our first anniversary of this webinar series. And we thank each of you for actually participating in this webinar and allowing us to actually continue it. The kind of support what we get and the kind of uh, uh, feedback what we have received from all of our viewers who have been there in the part of this webinar and consistently supporting us, they have actually, uh, they, have, they have really mentioned that the way how we are educating the people on this insurance concept is actually making a difference in their understanding of insurance. And we thank you, each of you on this. And uh, at the same time, at the same time, in this particular webinar episodes, if you actually look into the real purpose, real purpose of why we are actually doing this, webinar series is always to provide clarity such that you will have confidence in whatever the insurance policies which have already purchased or you are planning to purchase. Either of these two situations, we will be helpful to provide you the clarity such that you will have confidence on all the insurance policies. Okay, with that, with that, let us now get into uh, the uh, episode, uh, the topic of the episode. And uh, in this particular, uh, even before we get into this episode, let me also tell you uh, the declarations what we do, okay? The declarations are, we do not represent any insurance company in this webinar series, okay? And at the same time, the, we'll be discussing issues related only, only to insurance, not anything else, okay? And at the same time, we are not intended to criticize a particular person or a particular policy of any insurance company. If it so happens, it is only by a chance, but otherwise we don't intend to do this criticization under this uh, uh, webinar series, okay? And at the same time, the, dis the points that we discuss in this webinar series is also personal and it can't be taken in as an evidence under any court of law. Okay, so with these uh, uh, declarations, let us now get into today's topic. And today's topic is, what are those 10 mistakes? What are those 10 mistakes that you have to avoid in choosing your family health insurance? I hope this is, this is a very critical uh, episode that we are actually doing. And that too, on our anniversary, we are actually presenting this solution to everyone in choosing their family health insurance policy, what are those 10 mistakes which you have to avoid? Okay, and uh, the agenda of today, um, semi uh, today's uh, webinar series is going to be like this. So first we'll be doing a little bit on the situation analysis. After the situation analysis, we will be doing a discussion for the clarity for confidence. This is going to be our main uh, main uh, section where we'll discuss all those 10 mistakes that you have to avoid while you're purchasing your family health insurance policy. Okay? At the same time, we'll also give you some think tank section. We'll give you some inputs wherein it will generate a thought process for you in, in aligning yourself in getting the right health insurance policy for your family. And just like any other episode, we will help you out with the action steps which you have to take by the end of this session, such that you will have a pretty good clarity, such that you'll have confidence on whatever the policy that you're planning to choose or you want to review your policies, okay? And this is, this is going to be the agenda for this uh, uh, webinar series. And with that, let us now get into the first section. And by the end of this entire webinar, you'll be pretty clear on those 10 factors which you have to take care while you are actually choosing your health insurance policy for your family. Okay, right. Let's now get into the agenda. The first section that's about the situation analysis. Okay, in the situation analysis, we are going to discuss on what are the, what are the main situations wherein we think of taking an insurance policy for our family. Okay, let's let's look into that. First one, probably you got recently experienced a kind of hospitalization within your family circle, 
or within your relatives and close friends who got hospitalized and you have actually seen how much of cost is going to incur in getting the best of the best treatments for our near and dear, right? This could be one situation wherein you could have thought of having an health insurance policy for your family. At the same time, probably there's a recent suggestion which you have received from your family doctor who would have actually wanted you to get protected against any economical medical emergencies which might turn up because of any health emergencies which can come up in the family. Okay, that's a very friendly advice from the doctors and which we, we suggest that you have to go with their suggestion. Okay, probably this is the second reason wherein you might have thought of purchasing a family health insurance policy. Okay, and probably you have recently witnessed a health insurance claim which is paid to your near and dear, like could be your aunt, you could, uh, it could be your uncle, or could be your colleague or a friend who got hospitalized and got paid that medical bill through the help of an health insurance policy. Probably, this is the third reason which you might think, which you might thought of actually purchasing a health insurance policy for your family. And there might be uh, uh, decided to have uh, a family health insurance policy because of all these reasons and at the same time you are you might be currently doing a research on online or you might even gone to um, uh, policy uh, um, uh, po uh, insurance portals wherein you might be also even doing the research on which are the best health insurance policies for your family you might have even asked few advisors a few brokers to to analyze the policies which which could be a best befitting for your family health insurance requirements this could be the entire situation which would have propelled you to go and purchase and family health insurance policy for your family and this is the situation where we are in and mind it there might be some mistakes and it could be a costly mistakes if we actually don't take care of at least these 10 factors which are majorly influencing the claim processing under any health insurance policy. Okay, so let's get into our second section, the second section of the entire webinar. And this is the main section under which we actually discuss about the, the main theme where you'll have clarity such that you will have confidence on whatever the uh, health insurance policy that you are planning to purchase or which you have already purchased and you want to review it okay so let's 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 uh, begin the discussion okay so let's let's get into the discussion now so what is that what is that first point the first mistake which we need to avoid while purchasing the family health insurance any guesses if there is any guess, we will request you to put it up in the chat box. Okay, okay. Yeah, it, it, there is a right comment which has come up here. Which, um, thank you, thank you, Arvind. Um, see, what, what, what Arvind says, like, now, how do we know whether it is a mistake unless you actually enlighten us? It's a great thing. Good, good. So the first mistake which we all need to avoid while purchasing the family health insurance policy is always just don't look at the minimum premium and the maximum coverage. Look, see, most of the times what happens when we actually try to purchase the uh, health insurance policy for our family members, this is a general tendency what we have seen. We always look at what minimum which we can pay and what maximum coverage that we can get out of the insurance policy. This is the regular human tendency. Am I right? Okay. Now, this is where we actually get into the pitfall. Let me now explain you how does this happen. Okay. When we actually look only for the minimum premium and the maximum cover within the minimum premium, then you might be going through a situation wherein you will miss out on these major points. What are those? This is, these are the few things which you have to take care. 
The first thing is about the room rent restriction. Now, see, there might be a same health insurance policy um, wherein uh, a particular company is offering you a 10 lakh policy of uh, uh, some issued. Uh, let's say, suppose, a premium of around 25,000 rupees. There's another insurance company which is giving you the same uh, 10 lakhs of sum issued, but the premium is around 15,000. What do we think? Probably uh, the, the one which is actually you know, uh, uh, giving you a more premium might, might not be uh, trying to make some more money out of you. And then the one who is actually pay, uh, giving you a less premium, you might think like they, they, they're actually giving you the right price. But insurance insurance uh, let, let let me just tell you here one one very big statement and i request everyone to make a note of this insurance is not about just taking the policy taking the policy under insurance is like no man's job like anybody can go and take it the only thing is what are the benefits what are the coverages and in what situations the claim is not payable and what are the warranties which are involved and what are the minimum conditions which have to happen to get your claim this is where the entire policy comes up okay taking a policy is damn easy but getting the claim is a real challenge and the challenge becomes easy for you when you actually take care of this minimum and uh, uh, very minute details which actually impacts the um, the claim entire claim process okay now coming back uh, to the to the first thing just don't focus on your minimum premium or maximum cover because it might come with something called room rent restrictions in this room rent restrictions what happens see um, there might be uh, uh, like I, I told you like in the example the recent example which we were discussing about 10 lakhs of coverage right okay. they might say it is only one percent of sum assured as a um, uh, the room rent um, cover which is given okay and the other one wherein you are paying more premium there is no room rent restriction how is that it is going to impact you at the claim process because that is the main reason why we are actually taking the policy such that in the event of any eventuality you might you will be going ahead and getting the best possible treatment from the best hospital am i right yes okay so in this situation, what happens? Uh, so one percent of sum assured, say it is ten lakh rupees. So uh, of sum assured, so it is one percent is ten thousand rupees. So ten thousand is your eligible room rent benefit. Then suppose you joined in a situation wherein there is an ICU, and in ICU it is costing you around two thousand rupees. So what do you feel? It is only two thousand rupees extra that we'll pay it off. In which we will just pay it off from our pocket because 10,000 is paid by the insurance company. Now, there lies the real, real, real challenge. What happens? This 2,000 rupees on 10,000 is almost 20%. Am I right? Okay. It is 20%. So, what insurance company will do? There is something called as pro rate deductions. Okay. So, because you stayed in a room, which is 20% addition to your eligible limit of room rent, so 20% of your bill, they will deduct. Okay. For example, how it's going to happen. See, uh, say suppose the entire bill has costed you around the uh, 5 lakh rupees. Okay. So on 5 lakh rupees, which is payable amount by the insurance company. Now, because you, you stayed in a room, which is 20% higher room rent. Okay. So it is 20% on 5 lakhs. How much is that? Can somebody type it in the chat please? 20% on 5 lakhs. Yes, it is 1 lakh. So they will deduct the prorate deductions of 1 lakh rupee from the payable amount of 5 lakhs. So what is that you need to do? You need to pay that additional 1 lakh rupee from your pocket at the time of discharge. How you see? You thought you are actually saving the money in the premiums. Probably 5,000, 10,000 rupees additional premium if you would have paid at the time of premium payment and chosen a right product, then you would have not paid this additional 1 lakh rupee, which is a 20% on the entire bill, right, at the time of claim. 
which one do you think is the minimum premium which you would have paid look at the entire balance it's not just your premium you would also calculate what is it you you may have to pay addition when you go for the least premium during the claim process which one is beneficial i leave it to you is it paying less premium at the time of taking the policy or paying less money from your pocket at the time of the claim which is the major amount premium is major amount or claim is major amount type it in the chat box yes it's a claim is major amount so your cost is actually less when you go for the right product right health insurance policy for your family okay this is the first thing okay and at the same time there could be something like copayments copayments is 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 like you are also paying to the hospital along with the insurance company to the extent of percentage which is mentioned under the policy this is called as copayment that means we are paying along with the insurance company to the hospital right now there could be there could be some clause like uh, there is a copayment clause of 10% which you never knew probably they would have actually given you in the brochure and even the person would have actually explained you but probably you have not seen the impact of this copayment at the time of claim right at the time of claim so at the time of claim we need to look into all these factors because copayment if this 10% say the entire bill is 5 lakh rupees 10% of 5 lakhs that means 50000 rupees you need to pay from your pocket so we need to go for a, a policy wherein the copayments are not there. right probably you may have to pay little more additional premium in the beginning but that's worth it paying and at the same time uh, these copayments uh, we have seen the policies which have come up wherein uh, there is a zone wise uh, copayments which are happening that means you have taken the policy in hyderabad but say suppose uh, you went for any metro wherein you got the hospital you got hospitalized and then you are treat you are getting treated in say a metro location which is a different zone wherein the premiums were little higher but you paid for a zone wherein the premiums are lesser now you are treating getting treatment on the other zone so there is a copayment of 10% so all these clauses are in bed okay we have such kind of policies in the market so entire india it is not the same thing you you, you might be coming up uh, from a situation from a place where the claims are less so they charge you less premium but because you have taken uh, the uh, treatment in a different zone where the claims are higher so there is a copayment of 10% okay you need to look through these classes at the same time if you go for a non network hospital and you go for a reimbursement so there are two different ways of uh, uh, the uh, claim payment one is the cashless and uh, uh, one is the cashless uh, treatment uh, the other one is a reimbursement treatment in a cashless treatment what happens you will you will be getting admitted into a hospital which is within the network of the insurance company so the insurance company will give a promise to the hospital that they will pay you the money pay them the money so you may have to pay that additional uh, non payable things and then you will get discharged from the hospital this is called cashless uh, process the other one is a reimbursement wherein you already paid the money to the uh, hospital now you are getting all those bills and the receipts and you are submitting it with the insurance company so once you are submitting it to the insurance company then the insurance company will process the entire claim and they will pay back your bill which you have paid to the insurance uh, to the hospital this is called reimbursement process okay now we have situations wherein if, if there are few policies wherein if you go for a reimbursement claim under your family health insurance policy there is a copayment of 20% this is a clause which might be inbuilt into the policy if you look only for a reduced premium for a high coverage okay now see let's let's uh, so that's that's how uh, the insurance companies also try to reduce their liability and they say it up front in the brochures what they have given but it is only that you need to look through those details and then take the right decision for your family 
okay so it's a zone wise there could be a co-payment there could be a co-payment when the when the people are going for a non-network hospital that means went for a uh, re, uh, paid the money to the hospital then went for a reimbursement uh, uh, claims process okay and there could be also a disease wise cappings in a disease wise capping situation what happens uh, uh, especially we have seen the cases like uh, cataract okay we you have uh, uh, cataract and uh, you went to the hospital for the treatment probably the hospital is saying uh, uh, it is uh, uh, it might be costing around 70000 rupees for single eye and uh, the insurance company uh, normally they uh, they provide only 20000 rupees or 25000 rupees based on your eligible submission okay. based on your submission tell you the eligibility for those diseases this is called as disease wise capping okay now if you if you look for the least premium paid there might be these conditions which are inbuilt wherein for every disease there might be some maximum allowed limit of coverage under your policy so this is one more thing which you have to take care when you are actually focusing only on minimum premium for a maximum cover okay so these these are the major factors i hope this is this is an eye opener for each of you if it is yes please type in yes in the chat box oh thank you thank you thanks a lot for uh, for actually being so uh, uh, participative in this particular uh, webinar and we thank you we thank you for uh, uh, being so uh, um, supportive for all of us and uh, and supporting us to continue doing this bi monthly webinar series that is get more from malapuram and this webinar we are we are actually celebrating our first anniversary thanks a lot for all your support okay with that we just finished our uh, uh, first uh, um, mistake which you have to avoid while you are choosing the best family health insurance policy for your family okay now coming to the second one the second mistake which you have to avoid it is a non evaluation of network hospitals okay if you are not evaluating how many network hospitals do they have and how many of those hospitals are near to your your place of living or the probable different places where you might have travel very frequently so what are those network of hospitals which are available in those locations you have to evaluate that we have seen this uh, situation uh, uh, wherein uh, people uh, have their parents living in a uh, different uh, location in a district level or in a village or in a district headquarters and they are actually trying to take policy in uh, uh, in the city in the city and uh, so they normally don't even look into what kind of network hospitals that are available near to their parents who are living there in in the district okay so you have to choose though there might be uh, a little more additional premium in those policies but if they are actually providing you a very good network within the place of living of your uh, family then you have to choose that if you don't choose that if you don't choose that then there might be the issues like um like in a sudden emergency you don't know where to go you don't know where to go and you would have joined in a hospital uh, which is not in the network uh, list and you have to pay again the money to the hospital and then come back to the insurance company and get it reimbursed so it's like you, know, you are paying the premium and also you are paying the bill to the hospital and you not just this not just this there might be some queries which can come up when you are actually going for the reimbursement process with the insurance company and it is your your responsibility to go out to those hospitals and get all your queries answered by them and again submit it back to the insurance company so this is this is going to be a very painful process that's the reason we suggest to have those kind of policies wherein those insurance companies have got a very good network of hospitals near and uh, which are near to your uh, uh, place of living okay so that's something which you have to take care and they need to have the largest network of hospitals so that wherever we go there could be a planned uh, travel which we are actually doing right so wherever we go we need to have that kind of network hospitals in place and the quality of hospitals which they have in the network are the top end hospitals are also available or it is only the, uh, the the second level hospitals which are which are only available with the network 
So we should also see this quality of hospitals within the network. If the quality is not there, the premiums might be a little less, but you're going to face the issues when there is a claim. Taking the policy is just 20% of the entire effort of having the family health insurance policy for covering your entire family. The 80% effort comes up only when there's a claim. And this is where the 100% of the challenges which come up while you are doing the claim under the hospitals. Okay, so you need to have the right kind of product to choose the right kind of benefits and the fitment for your family. Okay, with that, we have finished the second network, uh, the second mistake which, uh, which you have to avoid uh, in actually purchasing uh, your family health insurance policy. Now, coming to the third uh, uh, mistake which you need to avoid. Any guesses? Yeah. Okay, so it's the timeline. It's the timeline exclusions. That means to, the, to what extent, what are the things which are not covered? This is, this is something which is most important. Okay, so why are these timeline exclusions which are, uh, which are given under the uh, health insurance policies? Most of the situations, what we have seen uh, in, in, in almost all the insurance companies, uh, uh, because uh, they wanted to avoid people who already have some problems and are actually planning to take the treatment. To cover the treatment, um, they're actually taking the health issues policy. So it is like there is a certain, there is a claim which is very certain and for a specific purpose only if somebody are taking the policy, then it is not going to be covered under any insurance policy. Because insurance companies has got these timeline restrictions for few of the diseases which are which might commonly occur but if it is already in a situation wherein they have to go for the treatment immediately then they need to avoid it for the benefit of all the people who have actually taken the health insurance policy because health insurance policy are by by that by that means any insurance policy is a group of people coming together and sharing the risk okay but if only the risk is pulling up within the uh, insurance uh, uh, policies then it is actually we are, we are trying um, uh, to actually do an, uh, a social service it, it it's it's more like you know when, when the risk is certain then insurance is not provided okay right with that let's now look into what are those timeline exclusions which are there under the policy okay the time and exclusions are like this there's something called as 30 days waiting period so what are the policy that we choose from any insurance company all the individual policies there is a 30 days waiting period what does that mean that means for the first 30 days there is no claim which is payable whether it's a disease or disorder any kind of hospitalization is not payable because of this 30 days restriction. And this is only for the first time when you're taking the policy, okay? Now, the only, only deviation for this is if somebody has met with an accident and planning to take a, a, a treatment under the hospitalization, inpatient hospitalization, then this restriction is not applicable. So only for the accidental cases, it is payable from day one, the 30 days waiting period is not applicable for accidental claims. And at the same time, we also have something called as first year exclusions. We also have something called as second year exclusions. What does that mean? That means few diseases will not be covered for first one year. Means you have the experience of one year. So from the first renewal, that means from the second year onwards, the, the, uh, the coverage starts coming up. So two years exclusions means for the first two years, it is not payable and only after second renewal. That means from the third year onwards, only it becomes payable. What are those things? What are those? Generally, generally, if you actually look into those list of diseases, the commonly seen diseases are like a, a cataract. Uh, I'll just make it very easy for you so that you can, you can uh, easily remember uh, through the body parts. We'll go from the top to the bottom. Okay, so uh, from coming to the eye, it is cataract. 
coming to the nose it is sinus related issues coming to the throat it is uh, uh, thyroid related issues coming to the chest it is going to be uh, asthma in the lungs okay and then coming to the uh, stomach intestines and the entire digestive system whether it is ulcers or the kidney related issues or pancreatic related issues or even liver related gall stones kind of things okay kidney stones gall stones pancreatic related issues all these things are also not covered this this is also a time and exclusions of 2 years right and then coming to the anus uh, fissures or fistula in anus so even that is not covered for the first 2 years few companies appendicitis is also not covered but in few companies it is not covered only for the first one year and in some companies it is covered from uh, after 30 days okay so we need to we need to look into those uh, things and uh, then coming to the genital organs for male it is called as prostate and for female it is called as hysterectomy hysterectomy or uh, anything any um, uh, uh, infections or anything related to the ovaries and uh, the uterus related issues those things and hernia hernia um, is also not covered for the first 2 years okay and then coming to the knees it is knee replacement or by the by any joint replacement surgeries are not covered under any health insurance policies for the first 2 years okay but if the same joint replacement need to be taken care of because of an accident it is covered from day one i hope i hope you are understanding this okay if yes can you see a yes in the chat box oh yes oh yes yeah kiran yes uh, why are these things not covered i i, I got it uh, kiran uh, uh, let, 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 let me just answer you for this question it's a wonderful question which is asked by our uh, uh, participant here kiran and uh, uh, let me just answer you that question why these time and restrictions it's because it's because none of these things are an emergency kind of uh, diseases uh, for example say suppose today we had a knee pain um is it that at, uh, today itself we need to go and get admitted and then have a operation for the knee uh, knee of uh, knee replacement for the knee pain no right no right yeah the knee knee replacement situation might come up probably 6 years down the line 7 years down the line or even 10 years down the line it depends on the kind of management what we are doing right okay so uh, these are the diseases which is which if somebody wants to take the treatment immediately that means it is already there as a problem with that particular person even before taking the policy and that's how the restrictions of pre existing conditions comes up so when you are taking the policy and you already have some problem with with yourself okay any any medical problem which is already there with the person even before taking the policy then it is called as pre existing disease and even this pre existing diseases can be covered under your family health insurance policy but it is restricted it is restricted because there are there are few companies which restrict it for the first 4 years that means for the first 4 years it is not covered so only after the fourth renewal that means from the fifth year onwards it will be covered okay few companies we also have a situation wherein they will cover after 3 years and in some companies they they even cover after 2 years and we have very few policies wherein you can pay some additional premium and get it get all your pre existing diseases covered after first year okay you may have to pay some additional uh, i think 50% additional premium they charge but they start covering after first year okay so um, and uh, we also have uh, the variations in the policies wherein this additional premium you may have to continue paying for the rest of the life and we also have a products wherein you may have to pay only for the first year and from the second year onwards it is like your regular premium which you will be paying so we have different variations in the product okay which are available in the market don't get worried you need a you need any help me and my team we are actually available and here is the number which you have it is 7569645645 you can actually dial up this number and we'll be happy to help you out 
next in, in in answering all your queries or getting the clarity of your existing policies or even support you in purchasing the right policy for your family requirement okay right so don't get worried so this is the third mistake which you should avoid while you are choosing the right health insurance policy for your family okay coming to the fourth one so the the fourth mistake which you have to avoid okay so there there could be some additional benefits within the policy okay so uh, additional benefits actually flavors up the entire coverage and these are the things which you have to choose from that particular insurance policy uh, um because this this is where you can actually enhance your coverage there are few additional benefits uh, which which are available in most of the products of most of the insurance companies uh, there is something called as restoration so choose a policy wherein you can restore wherein it can restore the submission okay and uh, means what um that is it says suppose the entire uh, coverage is been used up entire sum assured is been used up in a particular claim then they will provide an additional coverage of same um, sum assured means you have a 10 lakh policy you have used up the entire 10 lakh policy in a particular claim now what an insurance for pol- insurance uh, policy does it will restore the entire 10 lakhs for you back okay this is called a restoration benefit there are different kinds which are there in the market like uh, somebody says uh, uh, only after you finish off the entire the sum assured and uh, then in the next uh, hospitalization we are going to provide this is one variety what we have the second variety what we have in the market is uh, we will provide but not for the same person and same disease okay same person same disease we will not give that restored submission this is the second variety what we have we also have a third variety okay even though you have not used up the entire submission and you have you have not used the restoration restoration is still available there so whenever you you actually go back go to any hospitalization the entire base submission will be provided they have this third variety so we have different kinds of varieties we also have some uh, unique variety which has come up uh, in the market uh, which they call it a super restoration super restoration means uh, 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 the same person the same disease in the same hospitalization even if he is there see probably the entire hospital bill is say 16 lakh rupees okay and you have a coverage of 10 lakh rupees so with the super restoration you can also have that additional 6 lakh rupees also covered within the same hospitalization this they they call it as super restoration okay we uh, this, this is something which is very interesting uh, probably you may have to pay some additional premium for in this kind of uh, policies but it is worth it it is worth it because it is almost like you are doubling your uh, submission and suggest uh, going for such kind of policies okay then we have something called as recharge benefit recharge is is in the same hospitalization you can actually use even that sum assured along with the available sum assured okay like for example you have a 10 lakh policy on the 10 lakh you have a recharge benefit of 1 and 1/2 lakh so in the same hospitalization the same person can use up to 11 lakhs 50000 piece 10 lakhs and 1 and 1/2 so this is almost like the super restoration but in the super restoration it is your entire sum assured can be used up up to your existing sum assured it will be given so these are the different benefits which are there we also have something like you know the bonuses which are there uh, this there is there is um, there is a saying here like the bonuses are only bonuses until there is a claim okay so bonuses are bonuses until there is a claim but otherwise it is only your base policy which is yours so bonus is something is always floating so if there is if somebody uses it it's gone and even in bonuses we have different varieties available in the market uh, wherein uh, somebody uses the bonus then the latest added bonus will be reduced and if there is no claim again the bonus is again uh, it it will increase further we have another variety in the market wherein uh, the moment you use there is a claim the bonus will reduce to half and it will never ever increase further so and there is also another place wherein if you use the uh, there is a claim 
the bonus will get half and then it will never increase further and after that it, even if there is no claim it will never increase further so these are the different kinds of bonuses which are available in the market and uh, uh, so we need to choose the right product uh, wherein which can be fitting to your family medical conditions okay. right so please please be aware of all these additional benefits we also have something like hospital cash benefit which is there we also have uh, um, uh, something like uh, um, uh, what do you call uh, uh, the, the daycare treatments um, which is going to be covered and then we also have something like uh, uh, what do you call this uh, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the non payables which are also been paid if you actually go for that additional uh, uh, coverage by paying that additional uh, um, premium okay so all this additional benefits with will actually flare up will actually give that additional uh, flavor to the kind of coverages what you can plan for your entire family okay and we suggest we suggest to actually look through all these additional benefits not just the minimum premium and maximum coverage these are the things which can actually enhance the coverage for your family okay with that let's now get into the fifth addition a fifth uh, mistake which you have to avoid while you are choosing the family health insurance okay the fifth thing uh, thing is um what do you think what do you think it's going to be yeah yeah so it is who is the tp who is the tp okay. what, what what does that mean like somebody somebody might even think like no what does that mean the tp the tpa is called as third party administrator so this is the this is the uh, uh, arm of uh, an insurance company or an external external uh, uh, vendor of an insurance company who actually process the entire claim who actually you know get in touch with the hospitals process look through the claim look through your bill and see your eligibilities and what need to be paid what not to be paid all these things have been done by the tpa that is a third party administrator the first thing what you have to look at is who is this third party is it an external agency to the insurance company or it is an internal agency to the insurance company why why is it so important we suggest we are not against any external third party agency but we always suggest to have an internal third party agency why because see uh, we have seen in most of the external third party agencies uh, they have some limit of uh, uh, allowing the medical insurance claim to be passed by themselves and if the bill is over and above a particular limit then the external third party has to reach to that insurance branch and then get an approval to process the claim to the hospital and this we need to get it done when we are actually getting discharged within a window of 2 to 4 hours and it becomes so tough because you are actually waiting since morning to get discharged and hospital is waiting to get the approval from the insurance company uh, from the third party and third party is waiting to get an approval from the insurance company so there's a big link which is out there now if in this situation if the third party is internal to the insurance company then all these approvals can happen as a single window if it can happen as a single window then the process becomes much easier we suggest to choose those policies wherein your third party administrator is internal to the insurance company rather than external with the insurance company this helps you at the time of claim and at the same time you also have such a wonderful external third party agencies wherein they do a very fast and and uh, very fast service uh, to all their clients and they also even deal with uh, they have the 24 by 7 uh, um, linkage with the insurance uh, companies to get the approvals okay we have a few uh, uh, third parties but you need to know all these details to choose that right third party with the insurance company and we suggest to always have an internal third party when compared with an external third party in your health insurance policy for your family okay and at the same time uh, how many number of branches do they have 
uh, do they have more number of branches across india or do they have very less number of branches if it is a less number of branches then to to actually submit your reimbursement claim documents you may have to sometimes visit the branch office the nearest branch office and if the branches are not too many okay it becomes a pain in your neck because you need to actually collect the documents go find out submit all the originals so it's just a time taking process so you need to understand how many branches do they have and how many doctors do they have how many doctors how many processing team strength do they have do they have more number of people or do they have very less number of people and how many doctors are there on board for that third party administrator the more the doctors the faster they can actually process your claims okay so these are the factors which you have to take care the fifth mistake which you have to avoid while you are choosing a family health insurance policy for your family okay now coming coming to the sixth sixth um uh and even before going that like uh, we also have something like claims escalation matrix okay so um, see it is bound to face some challenges during the claims process okay because the people who are involved are the insurance company the hospital desk and also the patient right the the person who has taken the policy the the insurance company people might not be knowing the exact customized treatment which is happening to the person in the hospital so it can't be generic situation every time the same time the claims processing desk in the hospital might not understand the insurance terminology completely so there could be a communication gap which can always happen there are fairly high chances of the challenges which can happen at this point in time how can we actually escalate the entire process and how can we we, we move up the ladder to get the complete approvals from the insurance company and from the third party and then to the hospital such that the claim process can happen much faster so do you know do you know what is that claims escalation matrix if somebody provides you that or somebody gives you that kind of support it's great you may have to pay a little more premium but it's worth paying it because at the time of claim you will never ever face challenges i hope this is very clear right okay and with that with that we'll go to the sixth uh, mistake which you have to avoid while you are choosing the right product for your family health insurance so it is going by the feedback going by the feedback which is given by the people who might not understand the entire insurance process correctly okay. so most of the times what we have seen uh, uh, people do they do take uh, the feedback uh, from uh, um a uh, different sources like uh, they don't even evaluate whether they are actually giving the right uh, uh, reason or not see i'll i'll tell you one example uh, recently one of my client has actually uh, faced this particular situation uh, they have actually uh, taken a policy and uh, they have went for uh, there was an uh, uh, emergency hospitalization which happened and they have uh, admitted uh, their parent into the hospital and um, the moment they got admitted uh, we have actually processed the entire claim we have intimated to the insurance company and the third party and here what happened the third party is actually external so when they have actually uh, given the details immediately within uh, i think 6 minutes they got the claim um, number and then and then also even the claim has been even initially approved within 6 minutes that's the best part which happened okay and thanks to that uh, third party agency also okay? uh, so what happened uh, um, because of this fast action which happened uh, you know what client told at that moment wow this insurance company is very good they have just given the approval within 6 minutes i was so happy now the same person no? this is this is at the time of pre authorization approval it's the initial approval so the same person was actually waiting for a discharge in that hospital where in the hospital processed all the documents that's what we told and this guy, this person was actually uh, no, waiting there since 11 o'clock in the morning for discharge and the discharge happened at 8 o'clock in the night now why the same person called up and said raj um, uh, no this this company is not good 
I I just told you like what happened like no three days back you said it's a wonderful company. Now after three days you are saying it's not a good company. Why? They don't know. Um, see these people have sent all the documents and uh, um, they have not approved. Uh, no, I'm just waiting since almost three hours. So it was sometime around one o'clock to call up in the afternoon. Then when we inquired with the hospital, we have seen that hospital is still yet to prepare and send the documents to the insurance company, and which is not told to the to this person in the hospital by the hospital authorities. Okay, so a uh, one one small shift in your perception can actually change your thought process about a particular insurance company or a particular third party agency. Okay, so whoever is giving you a feedback, evaluate that person from which point and why is he actually saying that. And when you actually go through the situations, almost every insurance company is a good company. Okay, the only thing is how you can actually enable that process and push it a little faster so that it can happen much easier. Okay, so you need to evaluate more, especially the online reviews. Okay. We have actually we have actually seen a situation wherein uh, uh, it is the online uh, reviews uh, uh, which have been uh, taken and um, uh, say this online reviews uh, once we actually uh, look through it uh, um, uh, we know like you know, it is it is also something which is manageable right so never go by the exact feedbacks which are given online uh, that's my suggestion being uh, you know doing these webinars online I'm actually saying this. Because you need to go through the nitty gritties, why and how, okay? The, uh, and there might be some some kind of personal grudge which somebody has with some person because of which they are you know aggravating the things. Even those things can also happen, okay? Which we we actually witness these kind of things. And uh, sometimes the hospital claims that they will say, no, 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 this insurance company is based. No, why did you take this policy? As if like you know they are the people who are actually the decision makers or. The one who actually decides which is the best insurance policy or the best insurance company for you and your family, they, they they normally comment this. This we have seen it in many of the situations, and they do it with. And for your information, let me just tell you, this they do it with almost every insurance company. Okay, so don't get worried. Don't don't take such kind of people's feedback, right? Because they always say, you know, this policy is best. You would have taken that policy. You would have taken this policy. Okay. They might also be in a marketing person for some insurance companies. You you don't you never knew that. Okay, there might be a situation. Okay, so look look through like now who is actually suggesting? Why is that they are suggesting? Do they really know and understand about insurance and how it works? Do they have that kind of experience? If they doesn't have the experience, then how can you take their feedback? As a benchmark, and then decide on the policy for your loud family members. How can you take that kind of that kind of risk and the challenge? Okay, don't get worried. Don't get. Worried. Sometimes in the doctors they recommend. Okay, but do they understand how the insurance works? Okay, so uh, don't don't go by these feedbacks. You look through your product, and you look through the process of the claim. Unless you know the benefits of the products very well, and then the process of the claims which you have to go through, whether it is a cashless or whether it is a reimbursement uh, situation, you should know and you should understand the product. And at the same time, what is the kind of smart information which people give while they are actually taking the policy, and the complete information which they give when they actually get admitted into the hospital. This also matters. Okay, see, um, generally we we do ask the people for the first time when they are actually trying to you know, take the uh, health insurance policy. We ask, how is your health conditions? And the obvious answer what we get is the health conditions are good. Current health conditions are good. Then we well that and we ask, okay, do you use any regular medication on a daily or on a weekly basis? Then they will say, yeah, there is one diabetic tablet that we use. See, then we again dwell and ask another question: Did you went across any hospitalizations or any operations in the past? 
then they will see i have, i actually went through one operation this was 11 years back uh, when i went with and met with an accident and there was a rod which was put on my um, ankle and that um, uh, we actually you know uh, uh, now 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 everything is fine okay but how is the condition of that ankle is it still fine uh, sometimes i get some kind of pain little bit uh, especially during the winters now you see if you ask the same person the first question how is your health conditions they say absolutely fine but then comes the real things never ever give a smart information always give the complete information because any which way any which way you will give the complete information in front of the doctor when you get admitted into the hospital and actually we have also seen like now we also ask the uh, questions like uh, um, so um, do you smoke even though they smoke you know what they say no we don't smoke do you drink no very smart answer for this very occasionally we have seen we have seen people who say this but it's very occasional now how occasional is this is it on a daily basis or is it on a weekly basis or is it on a monthly basis or twice in a year we don't know how occasional it is so these are the facts which we have to dwell and ask them to write it and give us the entire information because any which way you are going to say this complete information to the doctor when you get admitted into the hospital right okay so if you give all these informations correctly then any claim from any insurance company will process very very easily and if you uh, and, and the feedback what you get with those kind of people is always good for any insurance company okay so to, just don't go with the feedback your feedback is is the or uh, whatever the feedback that you take is not complete it is not the entire true story it also involves on what kind of information that you would have given they might say you know the claims this company doesn't pay well any company will pay it properly provided you give the complete information if you if you hold it some information or smartly represented the information and you are given the complete information when it's a claim then or it's it's so obvious that any insurance company will deny the claim right i hope you are getting it. you're getting it can you can you see yes in the chat box oh thank you thank you thanks a lot thanks a lot for actually uh, interacting because this is the only way how we interact uh, uh, during this uh, webinar okay with that we finish the sixth sixth mistake which you have to avoid while you are purchasing your family health insurance policy okay now coming to the seventh mistake which you have to avoid while you're purchasing is you are not knowing the claims process you should understand the entire claims process it's it's your right to know the entire claims process even before you have taken the policy you have every right to ask what is the step by step process which we have to undergo for the reimbursement claim process and also for the cashless claim process okay and and this is the place where you, you will really understand what kind of organization what kind of insurance company are you dealing with because the products is just the front end but the process of claim settlement is where the real culture of the insurance company comes up. because we have seen the different different insurance companies wherein uh, sometimes uh, uh, it is only the helpline with whom you can talk you have no idea on or you have no clue on who is the doctor who is actually processing and you have no way to communicate with them some insurance companies they do communicate but it is only with their internal sales team and for the external people or the clients you have no access to the doctors then we have third set of people uh, of uh, insurance companies wherein you have an access wherein you can even talk to the doctor who is actually settling your claim and you can put up your uh, 
um your point of view if there is any query which has come up and the doctor is expecting you to answer that query okay now we have given you all the three varieties which are available in the market you have to choose which one do you want right because there is bound to be some challenges this bound to be some challenges we need to have that kind of support wherein we can express our our point of view to the person who is actually processing your claim right okay so in the claim process so if you are unknown about the claim process that's the mistake which you have to avoid you should understand you should under- understand the cashless claim the reimbursement claim and also there are some additional benefits they give like um uh, like your uh, every your health checkup or some other benefits which are uh, there so how do we claim that what is the process which is involved you need to understand is very very clear even before you take the policy and and this is the place where in like you, know, you can you can really evaluate from whom are you actually purchasing and this is your next mistake which you have to avoid you have to avoid asking for the commissions pay back okay instead of asking the commissions to pay back or you no know, try to negotiate and you no know, ask for some more you no know, reduction of your premium or you know, i i suggest just avoid it just avoid it instead asking for the commissions to be paid back okay which is against the ethical standards and the rules which have been set up by even the irda right instead of this ask definitely ask definitely ask all those intermediaries whether it is an agent whether it is an uh, online portal or whether it is a broker or a corporate agency anyone anyone who is who is actually selling those in health insurance policies for your family ask, ask these things what is that you need to ask you ask for the claims processing experience how much of claims processing experience do they have right and how many claims got rejected under their claims experience and how did they handle those rejections were there any claims which got rejected and then they went ahead and then uh, applied for the reconsideration then got it approved do they have that kind of experience as those online portal uh, guys who actually come up on call how many claims did they process do they have that kind of knowledge do they know how the claims process happens just ask these questions and if at all after doing all these things do they have uh, even if there is a challenge and they are unable to uh, get through the claim processing done so what is the escalation matrix which they have do they know that or they are out there only to sell the product just market the product sell the product and then just make some money and then go off do you want to go with such kind of intermediaries and and especially i have seen uh, it's not again is anyone but we have seen most of the online portals they do give a little brief on the claim processing but the guy is they don't handle the entire policy booking or even the claims processing by themselves so whom do you need to choose choose the people who got the experience of the claims who know how to handle the rejected claims who know how to how to escalate it further and who know how to take it up even with the ombudsman do they have the experience ask them ask them okay and at the same time how much of team do they have to handle this is it a, is it like only one person who actually handles the entire situation who who does the sales who does the booking who does the renewals who does who does even the uh, claims processing is is it only one person or is it a team of people who can be there always as a system to support your family in in the need of the hour do they have that kind of experience or is it that they are only doing this as only a part time uh, kind of uh, opportunity to just to make money okay choose choose the right intermediary never choose those people who are just there to sell and then go out okay and at the same time the mistakes the ninth mistake which you should avoid it is not considering an add on covers 
So what are the additional add-on covers which which you can have within the policy? It could be like uh, uh, the critical illness, the hospital cash, and the non-papers, which can be also covered as an add-on. Okay, they do also have uh, something like uh, um, your annual health checkups and all of these all of the add-ons are there. So these things can also be added up to your base plan to enhance the coverage. To enhance the coverage. Okay, so with that, we just finished the ninth mistake. which you should avoid and coming to the last but not the least and even the most important thing which you should always need to take care of is comparing comparing the group insurance with your individual insurance can be one can be one how can you compare a group insurance policy with an individual insurance policy see what happens when when somebody goes for a group insurance policy I thank all those corporates which are actually providing the group insurance policy for their employees, and especially those corporates which are even covering the parents of the employees. Okay, this is something which is really, really major benefit than even giving a bonus to an employee. I I truly believe in that. Okay, but now because your company wants to provide the best benefits, they have actually paid the additional premiums. to the insurance company and got all these waiting periods the time and exclusions everything waived up covered from day one we also have something like uh, the maternity benefits okay in in the group policies we can also have the coverage for maternity probably up to even 1 lakh we have seen 1 and 1/2 lakh we have seen right to 50000 to 1 and 1/2 lakh it depends on what kind of premiums which your company has paid to the insurance company okay so because they paid additional premium and the group is very large the kinds of the kind of premiums what you pay might be little lower but when you compare with your insurance your individual insurance policy it is it is not matching probably sometimes your individual policy comes little costlier but with lower benefits when compared to your group insurance policy okay now but never ever compare both of these two things because your group insurance policy is never your own policy it is not your own policy it is like because you are there with the company you go, you are getting the coverage it's like a rented house it is like a quarter which is given a, a living quarter which is given to the employee because he is an employee of the organization the moment the person is out of the organization neither that 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 quarter which is given them to stay is their own home or it is a rented home because they have to move out of that particular place so the coverage is gone it is just similar to that your group insurance policy is owned by your company not by you your individual policy is only owned by you not by anybody else so neither you can you can port your experience from your group insurance policy to your individual insurance policy there is only one option of uh, actually migrating your experience but only to the policy within the same insurance company and that to the insurance company agrees to the, do that okay right and and it can be ported it can be ported to any other best plan available with any other insurance company okay so so coming to coming to uh, this uh, uh, the 10th uh, mistake which you need to avoid is uh, because uh, in a group issues policy the claims sharing is is actually happen okay it is it is different why because because the claim sharing happens then what happens in the first year what are the premium which is paid the claims are many then renewal premium will be a minimum of your entire claims plus the taxes that's going to be your minimum renewal premium okay because the entire claims will be divided and distributed among the same population same group okay and at the same time the premium will change every year in a group policy but coming to your individual policy your risk is being diversified with all those people across the country who have purchased the same plan 
so getting to such a, po- a policy wherein the maximum number of people have actually chosen it within the country because of which your risk is diversified the more the risk is diversified the premiums changing within that policy will be very less okay so this is something which you have to take it when you are choosing the right product okay and uh, the group policy can never be portable it, it can never be done okay it can it can be even withdrawn at any point in time because uh, if the claims are more and the budgets are actually going way ahead, way uh, you know ever uh, from what they have planned by the organization organization can also say no it's it's going really high the premiums are you know going to change like anything so we are actually not going to continue further and can be withdrawn okay and especially especially uh, when you are actually covering your parents under your corporate plan don't don't depend on that instead have an individual policy and then take the corporate policy as an add on with it because for the first few years few diseases are not covered in your in your individual plan so those things can be covered under your corporate plan so corporate plan is almost like an add on cover but not as your primary cover so the primary cover should be always your individual policy and an individual policy benefits can never ever be as good as your group policy right on the first year but after your pre existing diseases uh, uh, timeline is gone then you are your individual policy is way ahead better than your group policy the reason because there is no claims loading in your individual policy there is always a claims loading in a group policy you will be paying more in the group policy and a longer term when compared to your individual plan i hope this this gives you a lot of clarity okay right with this with this we we actually come to the 10th mistake which you have to avoid in choosing the right health insurance policy for your family okay and you need any assistance uh, in this uh, here is a qr code you can actually take a snapshot or there is there is a helpline which is mentioned here this 7569 645 645 this dial up this number and we'll be there to help you out me and my team uh, will will help you out in choosing the right product or to review your product and also be very happy and have a clarity so that you have confidence on what are the policies that you are planning to purchase okay and coming to the last section that's about the think and thank so this is a section wherein we we always uh, you know allowed to provide uh, a kind of thought process wherein you can think a little further and choose the right options for your family okay and in this think tank let let us now uh, focus on that point okay as of the following even before you actually search for the family health insurance these are the factors which you have to take care what is your hereditary health history your hereditary how how is the health history your family health history okay your personal habits your work habits because these are things which are going to influence your health and how you are going to perform on your personal front in the health conditions okay and uh, if if say suppose uh, there is a hereditary history of uh, say being diabetic or being uh, cardiac related issues so there is a probability chance because the genes will express themselves so there is chances that you might get the similar kind If yes, then plan it ahead. When you are healthy, that's when you have to plan and purchase the health insurance and purchase it to the maximum. We have actually even uh, uh, told you in one of our uh, earlier webinars, uh, uh, wherein we we explain like your cost per lakh for the sum for for the health insurance policy will come down when you increase your sum issue. So purchase maximum, purchase maximum. Okay, then your premium per lack of sum insured will actually go down. You'll be paying less, and the total premium paid in the entire policy will also be less than twenty five percent when you actually go for the highest sum insured. Okay, otherwise your money will be more with the insurance company rather than they giving back your money. Okay, so go through that uh, uh, webinar uh, uh, episode. Uh, we'll also give you a link on. Uh, Uh, that webinar uh, on what is the maximum sum assured and how do we need to choose that we we'll also provide it in uh, in our uh, youtube channel when we upload this particular uh, 
video there okay right and then so these are the factors that you need to look at but at the same time protect protect your family your family is 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 something which you have to take care of because anything happen to any person within the family it is we who are going to suffer right and you want to provide the best even though even though you might be there a lot of things to be done a lot of things to be done we request you to focus on these action points after knowing the 10 mistakes which you need to avoid to, while you are choosing the family health insurance the first action point evaluate your requirements what are your requirements and this this is this is where uh, we are we are actually going, uh, going to do the next uh, uh, webinar wherein how to choose uh, uh, the factors the factors which are involved in choosing what kind of insurance policy this is going to be our next webinar uh, um, topic uh, which will do it and then uh, so evaluate your requirements okay right and discuss with your friends your family members your colleagues known doctors okay discuss with them unless you 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 but discuss and take their feedback but don't take it as the right feedback that's their opinion consider it okay and at the same time fix up an appointment with an insurance specialist who got a knowledge of claims processing okay that's most important you you can actually purchase you can actually look for uh, uh, purchasing it from any of the sources because there's so many people who are there in the market who are ready to sell you the products but they don't know how to handle a claim so look for those people who can actually help you out in the claims processing support okay and at the same time evaluate not just the benefits okay but evaluate their entire claims processing experience experience of the person who is recommending experience of the insurance company from who of, of, of whose product the person is actually recommending you okay what is their entire claim process in the reimbursement and also within their cashless facility okay with that with that We, uh, you you need any help in in doing or any of these things uh, here is a qr code you take a snapshot here is a number uh, it is 7569645645 just give a call on this number either me or my team will get back to you and will help you to choose the right product the right health insurance policy for your family with that with that we come to an end we come to an end of the topic of 10 mistakes which you need to avoid while you are choosing the family health insurance plan and we thank you we thank you for actually being so supportive and we are actually celebrating this first anniversary of this webinar series get more from malapuram we, we are we are really feeling so happy you don't know what kind of joy that we are actually getting in actually giving such a kind of information the kind of feedback what we receive from so many people who are who are very happy because the kind of environment what we are trying to create in the marketplace is to provide clarity such that you will have confidence on whatever the policies which you have already purchased or plan to purchase you want to review your policies you want to purchase any policy we are always there there's only one thing on which you need to call up that is 7569 Six four five six four five. This is the number which is also mentioned over here, right? Just call up this number. We'll be there. We'll be there to help you out. And we are here, and we do not represent any insurance company. Thanks for joining us, and join us back again for the next webinar on this bi-monthly webinar series. Get more from Malapuram. Thank you.